This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Okay guys, if you checked out my channel, you saw that I did an unboxing video on my uh, Enterprise Space Mouse. And uh, today we're going to play with it and see what it can do in Maya. Okay, so let's check it out. Here we go. Alright guys, uh, here we are in Maya and this is a kind of a different setup than what I usually do. Uh, working with uh, two screens here uh, because we want to get into using the 3D Connection uh, Space Mouse Enterprise Kit. Okay, now uh, what's kind of unique is that this is something that is typically used, um, you know, on the engineering end uh, of things, uh, not so much uh, for a 3D artist. Uh, but I've been playing around with this uh, thing for a while and I absolutely love it. Okay, so I got a lot of questions from you guys, uh, you know, explain it, how it works, and so forth. So let's do that. All right, now the main control here in the middle, what they call a puck in the US. I like to call it the brain of the device for the simple reason that you can manipulate, move, tilt, rotate, and so forth your object on your screen. And basically it feels like you're taking the model in your hand and just moving it. Now this is completely configurable, okay? So if you want the object to move to the right as I push this to the left, you can do that, okay? I just uh, programmed it in a way that it makes sense for me so left is left right is right you know you can flip it backwards you can raise it up push it down and so forth so absolutely cool right it takes some time to get used to this and one of the questions that I get as well is okay does that mean that you don't use your mouse anymore actually what you do is you use both okay so on my right hand I have the CAD mouse that is part of the kit and on the left hand, I have this device, okay? So what I can do is I can move this around and then I can right click, for example, on my object, select faces, edges, and so forth. You know, and I can zoom in on that, out on that, and so forth, whatever, okay? I can also control the speed of rotation. So because I'm fairly new to this and I'm certainly not an expert, what I did is I set everything to a fairly slow movement. So if I rotate, this is the maximum speed pretty much. But if you're really used to that, you can speed that up and do it really fast. Now, the question is, if you are in a workflow for a 3D art, whether speed is your best friend. Of course, if you are working on deadlines, you want to work fast, but you also have more the artistic aspect where you're thinking about what your next step will be. Whereas in engineering, you probably are following a protocol. But what do I know? I'm not an engineer, okay? So this is uh, our main um, puck here. And uh, once again, I'll just uh, show you. You can flip your model around. You can go left, right. You can just pull it towards you and pretty much do whatever you want, all right? Cool. So what else do we got? On the top of our display here, and we got an LCD display, including uh, icons, and hopefully you guys can see that. I'll just tilt that a little. Maybe that will work for you guys so you can see it. Okay. So what we got here is we have 31 buttons in total. And this whole top row here, you got, um, uh, let's see, six at this end and six in this end. You can program them, all of them. So, for example, some things that you do a lot in Maya is insert edge loop, right? So if I, for example, were to click on that and uh, push that button, you know, it would say click drag on edges. So I programmed that button to do that for me. You can use a button for smooth, for insert edge loops, for, you know, poke faces, whatever. Okay. And these are all controllable. And the cool thing is it doesn't only show their text, it also shows the actual icon that's used in Maya, right? And as we're talking about Maya, this device doesn't only work in Maya. There are other 3D applications where it does work. There are some where it is not so cool. So before you decide to buy a device like this, make absolutely sure that it works with your main software program. Okay, I know for a fact that it works fine with Maya. I also know for a fact that it does not work with the ZBrush. Okay, now because I am mainly working in Maya, for me it's perfect. All right, so what else have we got? 
So we've got all our uh, programmable buttons up here, and then on the left-hand side, we have a lot of common buttons that you would use as, for example, we've got the enter, the escape, we got the tab, we got the control, we got an alt, we got a space, and we got a menu button, okay? So again, this limits your uh, movement going towards your keyboard and back, okay? You can keep your hand on this device, you can use those buttons if you want, all right? So what do we got on this end, okay? Now that is pretty cool. Uh, first of all, we have, let's say, um, I'm gonna push my model way out here somewhere. I have no idea where it is. Down here, we have a fit button. Usually you would hit F on your keyboard in Maya, but if I hit this fit button, it will just come back and center into my main screen here, right? So that's what that is. And then we have a number of options uh, over here to jump to a certain position. So we've got one here with the letter T on it. We've got an R and an F, and it stands for top, for right, and for front. So if I push this button, it will automatically jump to the top view, just to raise that up a little bit. Okay, there you go. And then there's a little B on it because it also works for bottom, okay? So it's kind of hit and double hit. So there you go. Hang on. Yep, yeah, and there you go. Okay, same deal down here. Jump to the right. And I'll just raise that up a little. Okay, and if you do that again, it will flip over. To the left. And same deal over here push the front button, okay? Now, it's uh, kind of debatable whether you would use that a lot or not, considering you have the control of your uh, joystick here, which can pretty much allow you to do anything you want. But, uh, and I really enjoy this, it's so cool. It's like floating around. Uh, so that's that. Now, we also have the lock key in the middle here. So what does that mean? Now, let's say I uh, jump to my top view and I'll just uh, put that in the screen a little bit. So, top view, there we go. If I hit lock right now, I can take my control and go anywhere, but I can't flip it anymore because it's locked on the top view, right? So I can move this around any way I like and do anything except get away from my top view. So I turn that lock off, and again, I can do whatever I want. Okay, cool. So what else do we got? Uh, let's see, we covered most of those. These up here, V1, 2, and 3, are very, very important if you are into 3D modeling. Because, for example, in Maya, you have your bookmark, okay? Now, let's say you have a perfect camera angle to set up your render shot, right? And I'll just, uh, let's see, hit 5 for shaded mode. This is actually a colored color map ID, but it doesn't matter. Let's say this is my render shot, and I want to uh, render it out exactly in this position. What it can do is just go to my V1 button and hold that in for a few seconds. And what it says is it is now saved, okay? So if I move away from this, and I want to go back to my bookmark because I want to render it out, I simply hit V1 and boom, it's back. And you got three options here, okay? So you can use that as a bookmark because that's your render shot, but you can also do that because there's a specific area you want to work on, all right? So let's say you're working on this uh, lens here, whatever, okay? And you are sick and tired of going out and zooming in and getting back to that position, okay? You simply hold down your V2 button, and then when you're working on something else, whatever, and you want to get back to that, you just simply hit V2, and boom, there you are, okay? Pretty cool. So. Uh, let's see, we got uh, our main control, we got our um, customized buttons, we got our display, I explained all the buttons here. The main thing here, what you need to consider is what is important for you in your workflow, okay? What I personally love about this is this main pocket control, and 3D Connection has um, smaller products that are basically just the puck. But that said, it also depends on how long you've been working in 3D because if you have been working on your keyboard for years, uh, it's kind of hard to get away from that. 
Now keep in mind that during this uh, entire video, I touched my keyboard, I think once, okay? So that pretty much explains what we're working at here. So uh, hopefully this was a helpful uh, short little tutorial for you guys to get a little better understanding of what you can do with this product. Like I said, I'm a fairly new user, uh, but I got the hang of it literally within hours. So, uh, you know, if you want to check it out, it's really cool. Okay, that's all I have to say about it. So thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.